All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to calculate a very cute integral, namely the integral from 0 to 1 of the fractional part of 1 over x. And this is like a baby version on my, of my other video on arctangent, I think, of 1 over x. But I think it's still very interesting and it leads to a very new definition at the end. But I'll leave it all the way till the end. So first of all, let's actually get rid of this fractional part. It turns out for every y, the fractional part of y is just y minus the integer part of y. Which makes sense, because think, you know, suppose y is 2.333, then the fractional part is 0 0.333. And to get from here to here, you just subtract 2, which is the integer part. So this then becomes integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x minus the integer part of 1 over x dx. And I know you really want to evaluate this 1 over x, but contain your excitement. We will do it all the way at the end. Because otherwise, if you do that, you get infinity, and turns out the answer is sort of the difference between two infinities, so let's keep it for now. And what we like to do is the following. So suppose this is 1 over x, and this is 1, 0 and 1. We want to take the interval 0 and 1 and decompose it in small pieces. Namely, pieces of the form 1 over n and 1 over n plus 1. So little pieces of intervals 1 over 1, and so 1 over n plus 1 and 1 over n. So what this becomes, it's, again, little pieces of this form 1 over n plus 1 and 1 over n, 1 over x minus floor of 1 over x dx. And now we want to take an infinite series, but let's just be very careful about that with partial sums because there will be something telescoping going on. So this becomes the limit as m goes to infinity of the sum from 1 to m of this thing. So just convince yourself that this is true. Because if n is 1, this is integral from 1 half to 1, so half of this, and then integral from 1 third to 1 half, integral to 1 fourth to 1 third, etc., etc., up to, you know, one integral from 0 to epsilon or something. All right, great, because now we can actually evaluate this integral and we don't have to worry about infinities. So this is limit m goes to infinity of sum from n equals to 1 to m. Now, if we want, evaluate the ln. So it is ln of 1 over n minus ln of 1 over n plus 1 minus integral from 1 to the n plus 1 to 1 to the n of the integer part of 1 over x. But now, notice the following. We know that x is between 1 over n plus 1 and 1 over n. And in fact, you know, sets of measure 0 don't really matter. So let's assume x is strictly between those two. Then 1 over x is between n plus 1 and n. Remember, when you take reciprocals, you change the order. So in particular, because 1 over x is squeezed between those two integers, the floor of 1 over x is just n. So, on those little chunks, the floor of 1 over x just becomes n, which is much easier to evaluate. You just get a constant. And so, let's continue this calculation. Okay, that is... So limit m goes to infinity of, 
All right, I'm doing two things at the same time. Let's first of all take care of this ln. So if you actually write down this sum, you get ln of one minus ln of one half plus ln of one half minus ln of one third plus ln of one third minus blah 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 all the way to ln of 1 over m minus ln of 1 over m plus 1. Notice this is sort of the calculus dream, you know, you have a telescoping series and once you have this telescoping sum, in fact, all you're left with is just the beginning and the end, ln of 1 minus ln of 1 over m plus 1, but ln of 1 is 0, so in the end you're just left with minus ln of 1 over m plus 1. So this huge ln thing is actually not that bad. And now let's take care of this second integral. So because this is a constant, you get minus n times 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. But this, you can simplify, so it's minus n to the n plus 1 minus n over n to the n plus 1. And you're left with, this n's cancel out, and in the end you have 1 over n plus 1. So in fact, I guess with a minus, yeah. Minus 1 over n plus 1, so each chunk becomes minus 1 over n plus 1, and because you're summing everything, the whole thing then becomes limit m goes to infinity of minus ln of 1 over n plus 1 minus the sum from m from 1 to infinity of, I'm sorry, n from 1 to infinity, n from 1 to m of uh, 1 over n plus 1. So let me erase parts of it to make this nicer. Ah, very good. Which is very nice. You took this huge integral and you just wrote this in term, transformed it into a series almost. Okay. Now, let's just clean this up a little bit more. So minus ln of 1 over n plus 1. That's you know, minus ln of 1 plus ln of n plus 1. So in the end is ln of n plus 1. So limit m goes to infinity of ln of n plus 1. And now this sum, we can also change this a little bit. So this sum itself. If you start at n plus 1, this is 1 half plus 1 third plus dot dot dot. Let's just change the index a little bit. This is really the same thing as, I guess, plus 1 over n. Let's change the index a little bit. So that's the same thing as sum from 1 to m of 1 over n. Let's see how to change this. So this starts at 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus dot 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 plus 1 over n. And it's Monday, I don't know. So just one thing. So how do you go from this sum to this sum? Well, the only thing that's left is this 1. But because we have this minus sign, to make this correct, we have to add a 1. So we have that, and then just one little, you know, uh, change here. Um, if you want to just add and subtract ln of m, that's completely fine, but, uh, you know, we want to let m goes to infinity, so it uh, doesn't matter if you use ln of m plus 1 or ln of m, so really this is the same thing as saying limit m goes to infinity of ln of m, minus this series here, or this sum, minus 1 
is sum from n equals to 1 to n of 1 over n, and this thing minus plus 1. All right, and now here comes the cool thing. This number, we don't even know if it's positive or it's negative. We don't even know if it's finite or not. But it turns out, I don't know the proof of it, but it turns out that this thing is actually a finite number and it's negative. It's what's called the euler mascheroni constant. Or I guess minus this. So this equals to minus gamma plus 1 where gamma is to be defined as a difference of those series. So gamma, the definition is, if you want again, the limit as n, as n goes to infinity of the remainder. So n from 1 to n, 1 over n minus ln of n. And as I said, it's called the euler mascheroni constant. I know lots of people have been asking about this, so I thought I should do that. So it's really cool. It's a, this, the way I wrote this here, it's a finite number. It's a positive number. So in the end, what's our result? We get that the integral of the fractional part of 1 over x, the x, is actually equal to 1 minus gamma. So unfortunately, there's no better, you know, description of this. I wish the answer was like one third or something, but it's still nice if you take this constant as a given. And so if you like this little integral excursion and want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.